Alliances are useful in some situations. In others, they are absolutely vital. But they must always be approached with caution. Unity of that sort is based on mutual advantage. While that advantage exists, the alliance may stand firm. But needs change, and advantages fade. And a day may come when one ally sees new benefits to be gained in betraying another. The warrior must be alert to such changes if he is to anticipate and survive an unannounced blow. Fortunately, the signs are usually evident in time for defense to be planned and executed. There is also always the possibility that changes will serve to meld the allies even more closely together. It is rare, but it can happen. You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Should I have? It's a ship that made the Castle Run in less than 12 months. So welcome to Castle Run Weekly. My name is Danny. I'm Heather. And today is our Holocron Book Club. Yay! Yay! Um, we are continuing in Thrawn, and we are nearing the end. I think we only have like... Two more episodes after this? I think Something so. like that? Yeah, I think we're we have almost... one that's going to be pre-recorded and then one mm-hmm. that's going to be live again, the very last yes. one. Yes, me and Heather both will be on vacation. Separate vacations, but vacation nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, we will pre-record one of our book clubs, which is, I understand, not normally what we would do. Um, but it, we appreciate your understanding in it. Um but it'll still be there for you on Wednesday when our episodes drop for the book club um, every Wednesday. Um, so, But this week, we are diving into chapters 19 through 21 of Timothy Zahn's Thrawn. Yes. Um, and I love these chapters, by the way. Wow. It was so satisfying. Okay, so now I can tell you what I wanted to tell you last week. <laughs> I've been dying to talk to you about these three chapters because they're amazing. <laughs> so we walk in and Arenda's doing her thing, you know, mm-hmm. buying expensive wine and, you know, all of to the bribe stuff. someone else. To <laughs> basically. Well, buy in Lobby. Else. <laughs> I think lobby, lobby there you is go. what it's really called in the, in certain circles. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So she's doing her thing and, yeah, Tarkin, of all people, yes. shows up on the list of people for her to contact. I mean, and, what a coincidence. Yes, bro. but she walks into that office knowing that what she's got. And I'll just, mm-hmm. wow, I'll yeah. let you take that one. Because <laughs> I'm a little well, speechless at how she just walks up to him. Just with that confidence. like, yeah. and he And he shakes her at, at a moment. Where she's just like, so cool, this is enough, right? And he's like, no, you got more? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my pup's decided he wants to join in. Um, but no, I mean, like, she's, uh, I mean, she's basically bluffing the whole, excuse me for a second. Come on, man. But yeah, she's she's bluffing the whole time through, and but she's not really. She's got the good. Yeah. She just. Oh, yeah, she does. You know, she's just got other chutzpah is that a good word chutzpah i I, i've never actually heard that word (laughs) anyway i like the word though (laughs) (laughs) but um Um, she's got guts is basically yes yes. she just you know she was like no i really can deliver Mm -hmm. what i promise so make me the governor of lothal and Mm -hmm. we'll be good i'm still floored that it just happened the way it did because Tarkin was just a blind bluff that she was going to Gotti with, gave her gave him some crazy encrypted file that was going to take him forever to decrypt um, because she knew that he would want to personally decrypt it to take down Tarkin. Ended up recording the man yes. <laughs> talking about all this other kind of stuff um, and like just owned it and then actually comes through and has a chance to meet Tarkin. It was just like it, it couldn't have happened any any per, any more perfectly. No, like, it, it was, was just perfect. Absolutely, um, and, and very exciting to seeing them face down because she goes in with such confidence, 
And the way that they described Tarkin in the book was so cool. How um, I think it was like, like a, uh, a jungle animal uh, hunting its prey was the look that he was giving her. And that, that was creepy. Like he's already terrifying as a character anyways. That just like well, can added you imagine how many people he has coming into his office thinking they're going to change their lives by taking mm-hmm. advantage of Tarkin in a lot oh, of yeah. ways. So mm-hmm. he gets this all the time, I can only imagine. And you don't get his notorious reputation, reputation. without yeah. certain, you know, so definitely certain Absolutely. skills. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Um, but it's really cool because, I mean, like, through all of her bluffs, everything has started to work out for her. And then all the information, even I love when she pretty much gives almost everything. I love that she doesn't give everything. Right. Where he's like, well, hand over all your data. I'll give you half. Right. <laughs> You'll get the half when I get what I want. Um, but at that whole thing, he's like, well, you know, it's not enough. But that position may come open. And uh, I mean, he kind of plays her game with her too right. and everything sucks her right in. It's just like, okay, cool. We'll do, uh, you, you, you can kind of interim with the governor and uh, with the governor position and we'll see how it goes. Right. Um, we're just not going to give it to a civilian out of nowhere. That's unheard of. Right. <laughs> like he really like plays the game with her and everything, but she's just like, I got this all got in the this. back. Yeah. It's mine. <laughs> oh yeah. Which is, is, interesting because like even she thinks back of how this is what she's wanted from the beginning and then she even second guesses it for a second of do i still want this yes so yeah and you know when it comes to later in these chapters Mm -hmm. when when she discovers that um i can't remember which place but they wanted mm-hmm. more naval military presence yes and, uh, i think it was a neighboring uh neighboring planet a neighboring, neighboring planet like and she's yeah. she was downright scary getting in the chick's face and be like no we want it here and nowhere else. right we want everyone mm-hmm. to want to come here oh yeah definitely you know because i mean it's competition in that and um, i get because, it yeah. but that's that's wow to not want oh, yeah. someone else to be safe because you just want more tourism. Which is where she's been building to. That's yes. the thing. Like she's she's looking to grow Lothal, um, the this backwoods planet that she came from, knowing that someone else is wanting to grow their naval presence to attract whoever. Right. I mean, like you said, she's willing to keep another planet unsafe. And so... I mean, the ruthlessness, I mean, even so far as to her getting uh, Juahir uh, arrested, Juahir and Driller, both arrested on uh, the charges of treason and uh, yeah, working but with the rebellion she and felt, everything. I mean, I kind of figured in that she felt betrayed herself. I think so, to a degree. Because, um, you know, they were committing treason. Mm-hmm. So in her mind, she was kind of doing what was best for her. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Empire. It, well, and I think it was more of a, a best for just her, uh, knowing what she needs she and everything. She waited until the exact moment that it was mm-hmm. beneficial. Oh yeah, definitely. Anything. And I love how she played how she played it too. Where oh hello, how are you? And it's all cordial. <laughs> Oh, are we doing dinner or this today? Oh, you're not doing either. You're doing prison. Yeah. You'll probably be <laughs> just like, wait, what? Eventually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, well, I might help well. you out of it if I become governor, but you know, I can't really say. I, I mean, really like, say. she played it up yeah, uh, for sure. Did. And But it was a darker side, I thought, I thought to her. Because, I mean, like, even though, yes, that was what Juahir and Driller were doing, um, I mean, they were her friends. They were. And they so, were the only friends she had. Mm-hmm. And, and so for her to just kind of toss them out like that, I mean, she she actually, I, I believe it was, uh, I believe it was Thrawn um, that asked her if she would be willing to even throw her that. friends out. And she was like, yeah. in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, well, she proved it. Yep. <laughs> he absolutely proved it. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I mean, she's not, I don't want to say ruthless. She's becoming very driven. She's always yes. been driven, but she's got a more pinpoint for, focus now. Right. Before I felt like it was just, a, I'm going to rise to the top. And now it's, I'm going to be governor. That's what I'm going to be. And that is all I'm going to be. Whoever gets in my way will wish that they hadn't. Right. <laughs> so yeah, she's getting very, very driven with that. Um, but, and I, I think, I, I couldn't remember either if, did you know if Minister Tua, was that the lady in uh, Rebels? Because the way they described her with the blonde hair and the blue whatever. Right. I want to say she was in an episode, but I couldn't remember for sure. I didn't and look this, it up. Anything, it sounds but, familiar. Yeah. It, it sounded familiar to me too. Um, because I know there is somebody who kind of fits that description on screen um, in Rebels when Thrawn goes to visit Lothal and all that. So maybe that's it. Um, I can't remember her name though. We'll we'll either. come back to we'll come, we'll back. come back to that. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I mean, and even moving on there. So I mean, Price is acting governor now, um, and Thrawn gets another promotion. Another big promotion. <laughs> big surprise. But the coolest part of that, which I literally like, like actually yelled yes when it yes. happened. Um, Eli finally got his promotion. He did. And skipped a ton of ranks as well. They didn't make him start from the bottom. That's a lot. Okay. Last week we were talking about, uh, the little guy, the little Lieutenant that was like mm-hmm. Ensign. Oh yeah. Gim. Yeah. Gim. Gimli. Or <laughs> yeah. Was it Gim? Gim. Gim. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Gim. And, um, so I thought it was cool that Eli was like, oh, I so want to rub this in that guy's face. Yeah. <laughs> and like he even talks himself out of it at one point. He's like, well, you know, I mean, what would it do? And then at the very end of the chapter, he's like, I think I'm going to look him up. I think I'm going to look him up. After this. <laughs> but yeah, so Eli is Lieut- Lieutenant Commander now, all the way from Ensign. Uh, Lieutenant Commander, uh, we've got Commodore Thrawn. Um, and did you notice he's got his ship now? The Chimera? Yes. And yes. I realized that last week I said Commodore. Uh, yes. I noticed it. As soon as I read it, I went, uh-huh. <laughs> and I just, I, I agreed with you. <laughs> I was just right. like, Right. Yeah. Because I, I, <laughs> I, 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 after I did it, I went, Oop. but I didn't, I just, <laughs> I'm wrong. That's okay. That's why I... I'm frequently wrong. No, I meant whenever I was wrong, I was like, yeah, I'm wrong. I'm <laughs> just wrong about rank. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... And, and all of this was to Tarkin's credit as well. Well, Price and Tarkin's credit. Yeah. Because um, Price didn't forget the little people. Because she even said that she was going to bring that to his attention if she ever met him and all that kind of stuff. And I love Tarkin was like, who actually has that much time to keep somebody from rising the rank? <laughs> She's like, let me tell you. Yes. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> it was great. She's just like, let me tell you how petty <laughs> Grand Moff Gotti Gardi Gardi, is. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I was, I was literally, I, I was so excited when I, I finally he got his rank. I was like, yes, yes, Eli. And then when I saw you've been assigned to the Chimera, I was like, thank you. Because that is Thrawn's ship. That is, is his. So there shouldn't be any other mix Max assignments or anything like that. This is it. Yeah. This is where he stays. Um, which is really cool because then he's going to rank. I mean, we know in the future he does raise to Grand Admiral. So he stays with the Chimera. But to um, get his ship at this stage. Oh, yeah. Because that's unheard of. You know, you mm-hmm. don't just get handed. Right. I mean, everything about his career is unheard of. I know. Uh, it's how just, quickly wow. he rises the ranks and everything, like everything about it. I still want to know what they're talking about, him and the Emperor. Oh, yeah. I want to be a fly on the wall in it's that gotta conversation. Be, it's got to be in there. I hope so. <laughs> it's not. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I know, right? That I mean that that's the suspense that's kind of been killing me as well. Because I mean, like, even though that's in the background, back of my head, like, I still want to know. 
Because that... why does the emperor like him so much? What did they talk about? What's yeah. going on? Is there some kind of other mission that Thrawn is really keyed into? Because I mean, obviously, this whole thing—I mean, n- not to discount uh, Thrawn's military prowess or anything—but there's influence there. There Someone's is. Pushing I mean, the ranks. I mean, he's doing good. Don't get me wrong, but he's right. not doing. I mean, yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> my uh, what just popped into my head is they're trying to build a Death Star, mm-hmm. and the Dunium is going missing. When mm-hmm. they need it the most, do you think that their um, talks could be about, hey, Thrawn, I have a bit of a problem on my hands? Could be. And maybe Night Swan is in there at, at some level and knows mm-hmm. that Thrawn is kind of yeah, working on it. Well, and see what's kind of starting to be mess- or feel messed up is because um, I, I didn't realize it until I think it was the chapter 21 um, that Night Swan may be a rebel. And all this time we've been looking at him as a villain. I that that messed with my head. <laughs> I haven't just yeah. because he's a villain to these people. Yes, but right. these are the villains. Right, and, so, and I think that's what got me all flipped around and everything, because as soon as I noticed that, I was like, wait a minute. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> does, does that make me a sympathizer? <laughs> <laughs> that, can, that that just means you get engrossed in the story. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I think that uh, Night Swan probably is a res- rebel, and mm-hmm. he's... Uh, some, something's happening with that for yeah. sure. Maybe it's Ahsoka. No, I'm just kidding. But I mean, <laughs> you go in and um, you buy, a, I mean, you like streamline everybody's processes mm-hmm. for extracting and smuggling Dunium mm-hmm. when they need it the most. Absolutely. And it's not even really. Yeah, so I get it. I think we'll see. <laughs> I hope Definitely. that they surprise me. I think they will. They've done it I so think either, far. Yeah, I think either Night Swan's going to be either a rebel or somebody within the Imperial Navy or something like somebody who has knowledge but of you these be things. Both. Hmm? You could be both. It could be both. That's true. I mean, Callus was. Yeah. That's true. Um, real quick before we go any further, because I do want to talk about the last chapter with the uh, slaves. Yeah. Um, Elizabeth is here. Hi. She has joined us. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello. Um, she was talking about, um, she's put in a few comments. I loved how the situation played out. Uh, I was shocked at the part of the book. I had to stop reading for a bit after that. I was like, what the heck? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so she's definitely into definitely into that. Um, and it looks like a few people are sharing our live video too, which is really, really cool. So thank you guys. Thank you. Uh, and also my wife has joined. Um, oh. I would imagine that she's arrived to work. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we got a few, we got a few <laughs> people uh, hanging out with us, which is really, really cool. Uh, I apologize if I don't get to your comments really, really quickly. I'm like flipping tabs back and forth. <laughs> um, so uh, I'll try to get to your comments quickly if you leave one. Uh, but thank you so much for joining. Seriously. Um, but I wanted to talk about the last chapter of that one. Chapter 21. Yes. Um, where I feel like Thrawn may not be the villain. I mean, and I've been saying this from the beginning, the villain that we think he is. Because, um, so they get a distress call to this uh, troop uh, transport that has been stranded. Uh, They get there, there's the blood spatter, it's carnage and all this other kind of stuff. Really, really high up as well. Um, So Thrawn deduces that it's possible that they are Wookiees. Right. Um, because I, I think it was something about the bunks as well. The bunks are longer than usual. They're not stacked as high, and there's rings. Um, and so he deduces that they are slaves, and they are likely Wookiees, um, which I, I don't know how anybody would really 
um, detain Wookiees, <laughs> as ferocious as they are. I don't want that job, but... <laughs> no, I wouldn't want that job either. But no. the Empire has proven that they have techniques of um, persuasion. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, and uh, the whole thing of uh, with it being attacked and stuff like that is, I think this is where we get to see the, the, the rebels come into play where they're rescuing the Wookiees and, and things like that. Um, but one thing that kind of, I guess, kind of broke my heart for Thrawn and Eli um, is you will get to see a, a glimpse of their conscience. Like Thrawn says, well, they are possibly indentured servants or prisoners working off a sentence and all this other kind of stuff. Maybe they're not slaves. And Eli goes, but do you believe that? And he's like, no. He's no. like, he's like, but they're nonetheless, they're Imperial assets and we're charged with, getting them back and like you can just tell that it's just kind of like man um because i was listening to the audiobook while i was reading that chapter as well and i mean you just it, the way the reader reads it like thrawn you can tell he just is not okay with this but it's his job and yeah, duty comes before everything really though <laughs> yeah <laughs> there comes a point yeah. that you just don't follow orders anymore I mean, I think his whole career has been not following orders. <laughs> but, I mean, no, I mean, yeah. like, you really, you just, you decide. To make a, a moral stand, yeah. Yeah, but mm -hmm. that's another. Well, and I'm, I wonder if it's because he intend. I mean, obviously he becomes Grand, Grand Admiral. He's only Commodore right now. Only Commodore. Only Commodore. Um, <laughs> uh, but. I wonder if it's to serve his greater purpose that he continues to go along with it. Cause there's a few times where he's had to make decisions that he doesn't agree with. Right. Um, and recovering the slaves definitely seems to be one of them. Um, but I, I like the, the glimpse into their conscious where conscience, where one, at, at least at one moment, both of them, both Eli and Thrawn are like, this is wrong, but we need to do it anyways. And so it's, uh, I don't know, to me, it was a sense of duty above all things. Um, but at the same time, like you said, if you truly felt it was wrong, there has to come a time to take a stance. But in the situation that Thrawn and Eli are in, I don't know how much good a stance would be at that point. There wouldn't. Um, it wouldn't be yeah, good at all. It would literally be boxing them in. So but I, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know when it's mm -hmm. when you're talking about it to yourselves. You yeah. could, I don't. We could figure something out. Or something. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, but I'm an optimist. Yeah, I'm like an <laughs> eternal optimist. I always think that everything's gonna be. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I, I like the the glimpse of, I mean, for a lack of a better term, humanity in Thrawn, um, of that that heart come through for a moment. Um, but, and also getting to see his strategic expertise in play again with him finding the patterns and sh literally firing on the Im Imperial base. <laughs> that was funny. You know, that was like, really funny. where are your, where are your guys? Well, you can't know that. No, seriously. If you want to survive, where are your yeah. guys? Do you want to make it out alive? Because yeah. if you want to make it out alive, you need to get going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love that. Um, and even, even, even the person, I, whatever commanding officer he was talking to, even they were surprised. Right. <laughs> they were like, hold on. Did you just fire at us? And he's like, give it a second. And you're safe. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> right. It's like, and magic. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I, I, I thought that was really neat and everything. And then he was just kind of like, all right, well, you guys got the fighters. We'll take care of it. We're good from here. Um, you guys got it on the ground. We're cool. So here we go. Let's uh, get back to our original mission of recovering the slaves and everything. And so, I mean, just these chapters had me so excited. They like I, I was smiling the whole time because it's like the culmination of most of what we've seen throughout the book um, where Eli hasn't been promoted and he was feeling resentful and, and everything. And now he knows that it wasn't Thrawn doing it to him. Right. It, it wasn't because he was connected to Thrawn. It was just 
a petty moth. <laughs> I mean, for a lack of a better way to say it, it was a right. very petty moth who just wanted to exert his power. Apparently had nothing better to do, according to Tarkin. <laughs> Silly. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I love these chapters. I'm really excited to get started on the next three for sure. Definitely. Okay, so rankings arrest. Yes. I did not see that coming so quickly. Um, but at the same time, so quickly, I almost did. But yeah. I, but I did see it. I knew she was playing a oh, game. Yeah. But wow, that was awesome. Oh, well, oh yeah. It was. <laughs> uh, I love to like she and she even repeats it too. She's like, I just said do what you do best. I said, whatever you need to do, do what you do best. That's right. all. She goes, and I actually have that recorded as well. And then the ISB officer's like, yep, she sure does. Here it is. Da, da, da. And he's just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> it's just out of nowhere. He's just like, I, I did what you told me to. Well, no, 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 no. Not no, technically. No, no, no. I never told you to bribe anybody. I just said, do what you do best. Right. <laughs> Which apparently is bribing people. So, right. I mean, he got himself into that, but I thought that was slick. That, that was. I, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Wow. When, because <laughs> at the actual court and everything, and as soon mm -hmm. as the, guy, the lady came up to him and was like, I need you to come with us. And he's like, mm -hmm. I knew it at that moment. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> so right. I wasn't sure what it was going to be. See, I actually kind of thought that it was going to be the other uh, governor of the other planet uh, coming up to him. I wasn't sure for a second. And then when they were like uh, in the white of an ISB agent, I was like, hold on. Is this about to go down? <laughs> it is. It is. Indeed. Oh, yeah. But no, that was awesome. So she's finally got everyone off the table that she wanted to. Like, and that's it. Her, her, who's left? Is Gaudi still left? Why here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's and right. Driller. They screwed her over. I think they're, mm -hmm. they're going to. Okay, so we're totally left at mm -hmm. the very end with why here. I don't know how to say it. How do you say it? Uh, Jua here. Jua here. Um, mm -hmm. I think Get, I've been saying why here for the longest time, but yeah, yeah Jua here. <laughs> Jua here um, is, has been sending letters to her, mm -hmm. and they all get rejected, and there's a big pile of letters that she doesn't want to see right now, but yep. soon will? I don't know. We shall see. Boom, boom. I, think, I think she'll break down to it, because she's not as hard as she'd like to think she is. Um, yes. uh, she's very, I think very. She's tough. getting there. Yeah, right. She's getting there for sure. Um, she's get she's becoming the Arinda Price that we get to see finished on Rebels for sure. Uh, where she's very cold and very just exact. Um, but I think there's still a little bit of warm blood running through her right now. Um, enough for those letters to affect her. And um, I want to know what happens to Thrawn between. Mm -hmm where we are at chapter at the beginning of chapter 22 and where we mm -hmm. are at the beginning of season one episode or season three, episode one of mm -hmm. rebels, because something has happened hopefully in the back of this book mm -hmm. for him to shift from rational, <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, to, yeah, thinking, feeling person, but maybe in Rebels they just kind of broke it down because of, but I don't think so. I think that maybe mm -hmm. he shifted his, yeah. um, moral center. Well, and I kind of wonder if what we see on Rebels is literally just him in action because I mean, we see him in action in the book where. Literally, he just goes to just processing data, just about. Right. Um, and so, I, I wonder if that's what we're seeing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but I wonder if that's really more of what we're seeing is processing that strategy and data rather than being vengeful. But, I mean, they do kind of irk right. him the wrong way a few times yeah. and kind of make him angry. And so, at that point, we see an emotional throng. So I wonder, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I I don't know about a moral shift, but I mean, that could 
be? Because, I mean, we do see his view of Night Swan. And if Night right. Swan is, in fact, a rebel, technically, by his standards, they're the bad guys. Right. And when so he got in that guy's face and was like, and finally raised oh, his yeah. voice and was intimidating. <laughs> Roll an intimidation check. Sorry, I'm a D&D person. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah. It, <sighs> Mm -hmm. I love how he was like, oh, I wasn't angry. No. Just changing your tone can sometimes help. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Eli was just like, I've, I've never heard you angry. Oh, I was, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I wasn't fine. angry. Just raised my volume and tone right. <laughs> to get what I wanted. <laughs> right. And it worked. It worked. It absolutely worked. But I'd imagine he's very scary uh, when that happens. Yes. He's already very scary as it is. Yeah, um, and then you yeah. add his. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I can't. Whoa, man. <laughs> Just his presence alone is very, very intimidating. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth says that Minister Tua is in a few episodes of uh, Rebels. Okay, I thought so I had. She believes it's the same character. Yeah. So yeah. I think she's the one. One of them that we see on uh, the Empire Day episode. Uh, early on in Rebels, gotcha. um, when, in the blue with the funny hat and the blonde yeah. and everything, uh, before we meet uh, Governor Bryce. So yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else we missed. I think we pretty much got it. Was there anything else you wanted to add or anything like that? I think that I'm good. Cool. So. Uh, for next week's book club, uh, it will be just an episode. Unfortunately, we won't be able to be live. Uh, we will be enjoying some summer, summer vacation. <laughs> Much needed. So, so we won't be able to get together for our live stream. Um, but no worries. We will do a pre-recorded one, and then we will do our book finale live. Definitely. Yes, and I'm excited <laughs> about that. Yes, which is, which is bittersweet almost. Like, I don't want it to end. But at the same time, I'm so excited to see how it ends. See, I call um, it the five stages of book grief. <laughs> you close the book, uh -huh. and then you're like, surely there's an epilogue somewhere or <laughs> something. It's not over. Mm -hmm. And then you go through all of them, and you get angry. <laughs> you throw the book across the room when you figure out, no, nope, there really isn't another page. And then you Aww. find another book, and you're like, oh, look, a book. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's the bargaining the, stage yeah no that's the <laughs> you start it all over and then you're you after that one you do the same thing that's mm -hmm. <laughs> part of being a reader welcome to our yeah. world right <laughs> well, we're gonna have to jump straight into another book here soon for yes, sure definitely. we haven't really decided and settled on what we're gonna do i know we're gonna talk about the Vader comics, for sure. We've already yes. got one and two out. Um, I would like so, to read The Force Awakens before the movie comes out. So Before Last Jedi? Mm -hmm. I'm down with that. That would be, be my cool. preference. I've actually, I've never read a novelization oh. of the actual movies. So um, I, I started one when I was a teenager for the Attack of the Clones, uh, but then I lost the book somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I went on teenager. vacation with my grandparents and then it disappeared. Uh, so... So yeah, I never got to finish it, but uh, but yeah, I've never actually read a novelization, so that'll be fun. So y'all give suggestions on what you want us to read, and absolutely, we can give it a give it a think. Oh yes. <laughs> oh, and give us a suggestion for main character. Yes, uh, Heather is writing a fan fiction for Yay! Star Wars. Um, so I posted Monday this week. Um, that we were looking for an obscure Star Wars canon character. Um, so not a main character of any kind, very secondary, probably third or fourth. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, we got some cool suggestions on Instagram. Um, I don't know that we've had any really on Facebook as of yet. No, we haven't um, had any. There's on still Facebook. time. Yes. Um, because we're going to, because every week we're going to do a different part of the story, kind of a, like a Mad Libs almost style. Yes. Not exactly, but no. in that vein. I'm going to take, it's it's more Frankenstein because you take different <laughs> sections of the story yeah. um, and I create 
something hopefully readable <laughs> out of it. <laughs> we shall see. But what we will be cool is that it'll be made by you guys. Yes. You guys and us. It'll be our group effort. Group effort. Um, so just like we love for you guys to join in our book club. Uh, we want your suggestions on the fan fiction. Uh, the yes. fan fiction will go up on the site. Um, obviously, you'll get some credit, too, yes. uh, for participating in everything. Um, so we want to hear from you for sure. So if you haven't already, if you're on Facebook now watching this, um, it you can go to the Facebook post and uh, give us a suggestion on what char what character you'd like to see the story about? Um, Example, I think we've, we've had gotten Porkins. Yes, Porkins. Um, we've had Quinlan Voss. Yes, uh, he's another one. Um, another gentleman on uh, um, Instagram uh, listed like a list of like ten. Yes, <laughs> I don't remember right off, but there are quite a few. Um, but I'm sure that's not all of them. I mean, we ha there are so many characters in the background for Star Wars um, that the stories are just endless. Uh, so if you have a suggestion, think of something neat, something weird, something cool, let us know. Let um, us know. Leave in the comments here um, or on Instagram or on Twitter. Anywhere you want to leave your comments, we'll pick them up there. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, so yes, so again, next week it'll be a pre-recorded book club, uh, but nonetheless it'll be available on Wednesday uh, at, the, at, our, at, our, at our regular time. Got all tongue-tied there. <laughs> regular time 2 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time you'll see it go up on anywhere you get your podcasts on iTunes and we're on Google Play now yay, yay! I'm very excited about that I'm an Android user so yes <laughs> um, so yes yeah, so we're on iTunes Google Play uh, Podbean um, mysteriously enough Player FM Player uh, we FM. found here recently, uh, which is cool. Thank yeah, you to thank whoever you. did that. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we're on Player FM now as well. So pretty much almost anywhere you get your podcasts, we will be there to greet you with open arms because yeah. we love you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, guys. So is there anything else you need that we need to add? Anything yeah. I missed? No, we're good. Cool. So I'm Danny for Castle Run Weekly. Oh, I'm sorry. I just like I was all over you. I'm Danny. I'm Heather. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are Castle Lauren Weekly. <laughs> all right, guys. So, May the force time. be with you. Yes. May the force be with you. Awesome.